Hello everyone, and welcome to my armor review for the Geralt Full Armor Set. This is the new full armor set that we got from the first part of the Witcher collaboration. While the structure of the review is going to mostly be the same as my older reviews, please note that the only score that's going to matter is the final score at the end, because you aren't allowed to use individual parts of this set, you have to wear the entire thing at the same time. Let's begin. You'll notice this is a Rarity 8 armor set that can be augmented for the usual 90 defense. You do have to go in and augment each individual piece, so after the review is over, you'll be able to decide if you want to do that or not. The final elemental resistance of the set is 10 for fire, which means if you want to bring it up to 20, which is typically what we're trying to do, you're going to have to eat elemental resist medium at the canteen. All right, and then we have five water resistance, pretty meaningless. Negative 10 thunder resistance, that means you probably don't want to use this against Kirin. It also means that it's not going to be optimal against the behemoth, because the behemoth does have that thunderbolt attack. And then it has negative 5 for ice resistance. I suppose that's going to matter when Iceborne comes out, I'm not sure. And finally, 15 dragon resistance, which would be good against Archtempered Zenajiva. However, I would say when you're fighting him, it's really more optimal to be bringing the Kulftaroth Gamma Legs. Since this is a full armor set, you can't bring those. So you're giving up the, the Kulf Gamma Legs, but you're getting 15 uh, Dragon Elemental Resistance. It's just not a worthy trade. The Heat Guard on the Kulf Gamma Legs are way more valuable. So overall, the only thing that mattered was the 10 Fire Resistance, which is good, but also kind of average. The Dragon Resistance doesn't really apply here. It's good for Zenajiva, it's good for uh, Devil Joe, but again, you're you're going to probably be bringing a set with the Kulv Gamma Legs for Arch Tempered Zenajiva, and you can't bring those with these, right? Let's go ahead and give the Geralt Full Armor Set a B for average, but not bad, defense. If it had had fire resistance of maybe like 15, we probably could have put it into the A tier. After defense, I always take a look at the set bonus skills. In this case, we have the Igni, Intensity, and Super Recovery. You're getting both skills by default because you have to wear the full set. The Igni intensity just means you get to use the Igni sign. It's like a, it's like an unlimited consumable. You use it, it does, you know, it was doing something like 75 damage to 80 damage against Valhazak and against Jagras, but it was only doing 60 to the Behemoth. So it's affected by the elemental defense of the monster you're fighting as well, which means it's not gonna be, I mean, and the 75 damage, 80 damage is really not that much. It is useful on a maybe a very defensive sword and shield build where you're not going to be getting as much damage as you could out of your weapon so you have the igni sign and it's always going to be doing like a base amount of damage and maybe it doesn't really rely on your skills at all but it, it recharges so slowly that it's not it's not as good as you think it is it's really just kind of for fun so the igni skill is only going to get maybe a c I barely believe it needs a C even. I mean, on an optimal build, you're just not going to be using it except for maybe the Sword and Shield, just because you don't have to sheath, and that's that's the only reason. On everything else, you would have to sheath to use it, and that would just be a huge loss of damage. Now, I'm giving it a low rating of C, but that's not going to be an aggregate score combined with the other set bonus skills. Since it's low, we're just going to ignore it and pretend it's not on the set. And then we're going to take another look at Super Recovery. So Super Recovery on the Valhazak set, I rated very poorly. The main reason for that is because it just doesn't pair very well with the, the negative fire resistance that you got with the Val set. Like, think about it. In order to build Super Recovery on the Val Gamma set, you have to take three pieces of the Val Gamma set. And it has a lot of negative fire resistance and a lot of the most powerful monsters deal fire damage. Well, with this set, you actually get positive fire resistance and Super Recovery. So it's actually much better in this case because you're going to be able to eat at the canteen in order to build Fire Blight Resistance really really useful when we're talking about having your health uh, tick back rather than tick down right so this time we're going to give super recovery a b tier rating i think it's a good skill to have however considering you're still having to compare it against other set bonus skills like master's touch razor sharp slash spare shot which are both at least two tier levels higher than super recovery because of that it is going to be in the b tier all right so b tier for defense B tier for the set bonus skills. Not a good start, but not a bad one either. Let's go ahead and grade the individual armor pieces so that we can make sense of them as a full armor set at the end. Ideally, every piece of armor on this set needs to be an S tier piece of armor because when we go to make a build, we're able to select the very best pieces of armor out of, 
you know, our entire collection of armor, and then we combine them for an optimal build. In this case, you can be stuck with a bad piece of armor because it's a full armor set, and this is going to bring down the tier rating of the entire build, unfortunately. Starting with Geralt's Head Alpha, it's giving you two levels of weakness exploit, one level of recovery speed, and two small decoration slots. The recovery speed is nice, but not really necessary, so this piece of armor basically ties with the Nergigante helmet, and that's a pretty good helmet right now, tying with other optimal helmets like the Dragon King Eye Patch, Draken Armet, and the Teostragamma helmet, so we're going to go ahead and place it right into S tier. Next, we can jump over to Geralt's Body Alpha. It's a pretty strange armor piece because it gives you only small decoration slots and small decoration skills. You get three levels of health boost, two levels of attack boost, and two empty decoration slots. It's basically like giving the player health boost three and attack boost four. As you might recall, I convert three small decorations to the worth of about two medium decoration slots. Although, I've thought about this conversion recently and realized it's a bit more complicated than that. You really want to make sure that your build has a certain number of medium decoration slots, and then they start to have diminishing returns on their value, and the small decoration slots kind of kick in and become more valuable. You know, you're trying to build things like Attack Boost 4. So what I'm saying is if you can get Weakness Exploit, Max Might, uh, maybe Handicraft, Free Element, and Crit Boost onto your build, then you, you want to have room for some small decoration slots, and it's at that point that the decorations, the small decorations, three of them are worth about two medium decorations. But if you're not able to build all those previous skills, the conversion doesn't really work. You see what I'm saying? I, I kind of realized that the other day. I just thought I would point it out for people who have been following my reviews for the armor. So what's nice about this chest piece is that the health boost is at the top of my list for defensive skills, and attack boost is high up on the list for damaging skills. However, for speedrunners, this also means that the set is already no good, because the only skills that mattered were the attack boost skills. So I like health boost, and I'm going to give them a good grade because they're one of the best defensive skills, but we have to take some points off this piece of armor, because it's pointless to speedrunners and we care about them too. For everyone else, I think this piece of armor is actually very efficient and useful, so it's going into the A plus tier. If those health boost slots had just been three more empty decoration slots, this would be probably an S tier chest piece, setting a new tier for chest piece efficiency that could be paired with something like the Xenogiva Gamma set or the Teostra Gamma set if it wasn't part of a full armor set. And now we move on to Geralt's Arms Alpha. This is kind of where things start to go wrong. It comes with two levels of recovery speed, one level of marathon runner, and one large decoration slot. That large decoration slot is super important here because it allows you to finish free element slash ammo up if you have the decoration for it. But what's holding us back with the arms are the two levels of recovery speed as well as the one level of marathon runner. Marathon Runner is really only a skill you would consider for dual blades, which may or may not be an upcoming Witcher weapon that's going to be released into Monster Hunter World. And while it's going to be nice for a dual blade build, it takes up slots that could have gone to any other weapon class, so we would have been better off with an empty decoration slot, and then we can decide if we want Marathon Runner on our dual blade build. You can also see Capcom once again forcing us to use recovery speed, Probably because they know the set bonus skill super recovery kind of sucks without it, that's the truth. But honestly, those levels of recovery speed should have just been given to us for free, like the first level was given to us on the helmet. In this case, you can tell Capcom actually wants the two levels of recovery speed to count toward the efficiency rating of the armor, and so we have to take big points off because recovery speed is not a serious defense option against the strongest monsters in the game, and neither is super recovery, that's just the truth. So like, when you're fighting a really tough monster and he hits you once, you're going to take a big chunk of damage, you're going to go below half health, and at that point, you don't really risk getting hit again, you stop and you heal, rather than waiting for super recovery to heal your health back up. So, uh, for casual fights, yes, super recovery is very nice. For serious fights like the Extreme Behemoth, Arch Tempered Zenajiva, Arch Tempered Lunastra, maybe Arch Tempered Teostra, you don't really want to entirely rely on super recovery and, and recovery speed, unfortunately. The Geralt arms are being dropped into C tier because all you're getting that's actually important is the large decoration slot. You're not even building toward an important set bonus skill like you would with something like the Rathalos armor, right? Rathalos armor, it has armor pieces that aren't the most efficient in the game, but you gotta have critical element. Well, in this case, this isn't the most efficient uh, piece of arms for the arm slot, 
and it doesn't even have a really important set bonus skill on it. After the arms, we have the Geralt's Torso Alpha, and this piece really isn't too bad. You're finishing off Weakness Exploit with one more level, and that's fine because you've already got two levels of Weakness Exploit and there's a full armor set. And then you're forced to take two levels of Bombardier, hmm. Finally, you're given one medium decoration slot. The only problem I have is that Bombardier has limited usefulness. If you're fighting Arch-Tempered Kul Roth, regular Kul Roth, then yes, it's very useful. But for everything else, it's kind of, you know, I'd say it's more of a luxury. Does that make sense? Especially if you have nobody on your team actually putting the monster to sleep. And even in the case where you're using it against Kul Roth, check this out. The Zora Spine Gamma is just a direct upgrade to the Geralt Torso, giving you a large decoration slot, a medium decoration slot. We could say that's being used for weakness exploit. And then those same two levels of Bombardier and even a free level of Critical Eye. So in this case, I think the Geralt Torso Alpha should go into the B tier. For non kulf monster fights, you're really getting one level of weakness exploit and one medium decoration slot. It's basically just a different version of the Lunastra Beta Coil in that case. I suspect the reason Capcom gives us Bombardier is because they wanted this to pair well with a sword and shield setup and it's actually very easy to use barrel bombs with the sword and shield because you don't have to sheath, you just put it down. Finally, we have one more piece of armor, Geralt's Legs Alpha, which strangely decides to give us two levels of Critical Eye, two levels of Marathon Runner, and one medium decoration slot. The first two levels of Critical Eye, the problem is they're just not that good. They only give 6% affinity together, and then if you want Critical Eye to actually be worth the investment, you basically need to take it all the way to rank 7, because after rank 3, that's when, you know, each progressive level of a Critical Eye actually matters. So it's the case where if you only take 3 levels of Critical Eye, you're kind of wasting your small decoration slots. It's not that good. You would need to take all of your empty small decoration slots uh, for Critical Eye in order to get to rank 7 on the Geralt set. Alternatively, you could use a Critical Eye Charm, but then you're giving up the charm slot for small decoration skills. So there's really a limited number of situations where that's optimal. I'm basically saying you either have to accept that the critical eye is not going to be that useful on this uh, setup, or you're going to have to be limiting your builds so that you don't need something like the max might charm, the free element charm, or the handicraft charm, and that's just not realistic. After that, we once again have the marathon skills, which mostly just apply to the dual blades, as I said earlier. So in all other cases, this is a pair of legs with two levels of critical eye and one medium decoration slot. But for dual blades, it is a pretty efficient way to get to marathon level three. Because of this discrepancy, I'm going to be giving it a B minus for most cases and an A for dual blades. There really is a lot of competition in the leg armor slot, even if these do pretty well for dual blades. But then again, you typically don't trade the legs out when you're building master's touch or spare shot uh, you have other legs like the Kirin Beta Legs and the Death Stench Heal Beta, right? There's a lot of options, and, and I don't think these are necessarily your best option. That completes grading the pieces of the set. Now we have to get to the aggregate score to really see how good or bad this armor set is, and this time the only score that matters is the aggregate score. Let's see, we gave it a B in defense, a B in the set bonus skills, S for the helmet, A plus for the chest, C for the arms, B for the coil, and finally, B- minus for the legs in most cases, A when using dual blades. I wouldn't make this separation between scores normally, it's just on account of the fact that we can't use any other legs on this build, so you have to have Marathon Runner. This brings the total score to B plus in both cases, that's right, so even when the, using the dual blades and you get a better grade on the legs, it still averages out to, it's still within the margins of B plus for, for the grade, it doesn't jump into A. I, I think that sounds pretty accurate for the grading. For a player who doesn't have a lot of armor in the end game, this is actually a nice build for you. You can throw on protection, you can throw on elemental resist, uh, you can do this in the small decoration slots, and then any combination of maximum might, the handicraft charm, critical boost, you can put those in the remaining slots. You'd end up with a tankier version of the Valhazak Gamma set, which only scored, by the way, B- minus for its final score. And the Valhazak Gamma set isn't useless either, it's still probably a pretty strong option for uh, dragon damage weapons that don't have low affinity. For players who are in the end game and have already gotten most of the armor and most of the decorations, you're going to be able to outplay this armor set by combining S tier armor pieces into a more optimal build that doesn't force you to take recovery speed and marathon runner. Not to mention you have access to 
Master's Touch, and Spare Shot. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few builds just for fun. The first thing I noticed is that it would be a waste to build for explosive weapons because then you wouldn't be utilizing the built-in affinity very well. So this the Geralt set has a lot of affinity, it doesn't pair very well with explosive weapons. You can still do it if you want. The other thing I noticed is that the limit on decoration slots means you're better off when the weapon you've chosen has some of its own built-in skills or decoration slots. Also, since we don't have Master's Touch, you can't really rely on maintaining your sharpness. So in this case, the Lunastra Styx weapons are not a bad idea. Here's a setup using the Support Light Bowgun. Notice how we only need two levels of free element in order to boost the normal ammo level 2, increase the clip size, and we can bring Force Shot with the empty decoration slot on the weapon. After the Light Bowgun, here's a setup for the Kiar Dagger's Water. Notice that we are getting critical element from the weapon itself, and this would be true for all of the Kiar weapons. Sadly though, we aren't also able to build Master's Touch, which is a really useful skill for the dual blades. But if you wanted dual blades on a tankier build with super recovery, then something like this is going to be your best option. And finally, here's a build with maxed out defensive skills and the Witcher Sword and Shield. I added Protection, Recovery Up, Fortitude, three levels of Guard, and Guard Up. Don't forget Guard Up. Do I recommend a build like this? Not really, but I suppose you could use Barrel Bombs and maybe the Igni Sign to help compensate for your terrible weapon damage. It's pretty fun to play around with at least. Here you can see me guarding against the Extreme Behemoth. Later I'm sure we'll be able to augment this weapon for health regen, and then you're going to be pretty hard to kill. That is, until Extreme Behemoth gets you with the Ecliptic Meteor. Alright, well that's everything I have to say about the new Geralt Full Armor set. I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.